so this is the dying area. So this is Stedbury. This is a uh, uh, rod. So after washing both the bleach fabric and the dyed fabric, so you didn't see any dyeing going on over there because we're just doing the canvas run today. But um, this is in um, drying the fabric and giving it dimensional stability. So the way we do that is up here on the stand up. So they're still setting up here, but basically you will see that the clips hold the fabric of the, of the width and they control the tension from front to back and across and they basically heat set it. So this is a big, big baking oven basically and that gives wow. it control of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, so all of the canvas has to come through and get baked yeah. um, after dyeing. After, after it's been dying. dying. After yeah. dying, after bleaching. Is this dry zone material or? That is a dry zone, yeah. Okay, that's so that's dry zone, like the black of it. <laughs> they got black too, do they? Yeah, they got black. It's a lighter brown and a black as well. Yeah. What about ROVs? Are you doing anything for them? Yeah, yeah, we're doing uh, that much swags, bags, and uh, coats as well. Yeah. Right, the material? Yeah. Is a lot of that, any of that made in Australia? Um, you know? The coats are still made in Australia, but yeah. the other products I think are made off yeah. Yeah, a lot of, I've noticed the small leather products made in Bangladesh. Oh. Yeah, like wallets and yeah. things like that. But, uh, but the coats are still made here, I think. They had a recent ownership change. Yeah. Louis Vuitton bought them out, and the Sydney don't mean global as well, straight away. Yeah. So that appeal of making the uh, Bush Outfitters year here in Australia, that, wow. that, 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 that was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is stretching it out, eh? Yeah, it's stretching it out. So it's highly skilled industry, isn't it? it is. That's the other thing with industry, it's high skills, eh? Like if you're just doing, um, you know, in other term, other sort of jobs, it's, it's low skilled a lot of the time, but this is high skilled stuff, eh? Yeah, some, some of these guys have been working here for 10 plus years, they're still learning as well. But it takes at least a year of training before we let them take over and have a million dollar machine like this. Yeah. And you must have a pretty good operation, like CRO, an operational manager, or are you that yourself, or...? Right. You know, we have an operations manager here. He's actually our second employee, way back in 91. Yeah, right. And uh, he's still now, he's graduated his way to the top. Yeah. He's been running the plant for probably five years now. Yeah, right. How often do you come out here and just walk around and just keep an eye on what's going on? Yeah, I try, to, right? I try to work here every day. A lot of yeah. the time in the office, though, doing emails and... You know, answering customers, I've got a couple of committee positions, industry positions, but yeah, walk through the mill and my dad's still active too, so he yeah. loves the, the factory walk through yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I like doing at Drifter, I just turn the walk around, because you, you learn, you know, you see so much going on. Yeah. It's important to be able to get down here, isn't it? You it know, is. on the floor. It is. You Critical part of running a business is maintaining close contact with the staff and what's happening on the ground, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And that's what my dad loves doing as well, so. Between the two of us, we, we share it and um, yeah, it works so well. So, what's going on here? Okay, so we're about to set up a proofing run, it looks like. I'll just point out uh, this is where the proofing is. Yeah, that's right. So, are you about an hour or in between batches? Or? Oh, yeah, about half hour. About half hour? Yeah. What, what are you running then? Okay, okay, it's, oh, it's about half an hour. Yeah, about right. half an hour. We'd like to go over and see what was it going on there. The weaving machine we should be running yeah. over in the weaving. Yeah. Here's some rolling oil. We're going to send the product out. We're going to roll. Oh, yeah. So that, that takes the final product off the big roll and puts it into what you're going to sell it at. So after we've done the weaving and the bleaching and the heat setting, then we do the proofing, which is we're about to get going for the next batch. Then we roll it and send it to customers and, like yourself would. Yeah. And this cardboard is just so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't sort of get a flat bottom. Like correct, it. correct. So the nails of the tip of power don't yeah, come through right, and pierce yeah. the canvas. That's a big roll. Like, what's that? 100 metres? That's that 150 metres, that one. Who would take canvas like that? Um, 
Yeah. So the, the, big, the big military guys. So we, we, we're getting in what a 50 metre roll, don't we? You get 50 metres. But yeah. even that's pretty heavy, isn't it? What's it a 50 is, metre yeah. roll weigh? Like 30 kilos? About 40 or? kilos. 40 kilos. Yeah. So that'd be way. You couldn't, yeah, you need a forklift to lift it up and down, eh? Well, I went through Bruce's factory at Kimberley and he was using rolls this big, I think. He was taking it aside, yeah. Yeah, right. So we could use that, but we just don't... we gotta, we got to lift the rolls up on the bench. True. So, yeah. And it's cheaper, like, a bigger roll? Uh, uh, not really for us. Yeah. You can see the cores here. This is what goes... It's more convenient for the manufacturers that have to change rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Is that my navy blue? Yeah, that's my navy. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Drift to Navy. Yeah. Drift to Navy Blue. That's it. <laughs> wow. That's what really getting into. Uh, my sister wanted this colour. The girls like Navy, don't they? We've realised that. Yeah, with that leather too, it really lifts it. So. Well, this is a man bag, this one. Lovely you know, contrast. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, really like it, the Navy Blue and Brown. So that with the leather. I mean, that's our future for stuff, is, is that sort of bag, you know what I mean? Because we can sell that all over the world, you know, and uh, a bit of leather trim and that sort of stuff. But we're still prototyping these. Yep. Still testing and working it out. Your wife's testing one out and she, uh, yeah, she I'll loves it. one out. She so. loves it. With a zip on top too, she reckons that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, amazing, you know, for us as an end user, the, the design, it takes, it's a long process to, to design a bag. This bag's been regressing for months and months, you know, and it's still not quite right. So it's a long process for us. Yeah. Before we get a product, we're like, let's get yeah, our get into production, yeah. Well, no, it's a great job you're doing, Luke. It's, uh, it's come a long way from what it was. It has, mate. Pre leather days, yeah. So you've got large amounts of inventory, haven't you? Like, stock in production, you know? Yeah, we've got heavy, heavy machinery and lots of stock. Yeah. About, about 2 million square metres a year of Wow. Yeah. This yeah. is dry as a bone black? So this is actually a mole skin we're doing here. Um, where it's, a, it's a heavy wire brush and it brushes the fabric up to give it a nice uh, nap pan like a blanket. That's all mole skin is, isn't it? So you can see here, look, oh, that's one yeah. side, yep. and the back side's brushed up. Oh, okay, for moleskin pants. For moleskin pants, yeah. Oh, so that's all moleskin is, it's just brushed up and cotton. Yeah, it's a really heavy, densely woven cotton, dyed and then brushed. Wow. And that's what gives you the, uh, the soft hand on the other side. A pure cotton. Pure cotton. Yeah. Yeah. So this all scan here has been printed. It's, what's the process? You just got to get rolled, that's all? Yeah, so that's banked up ready for uh, some pre-shrinking to do as a final process, and then we'll roll it. Yeah, right. So yeah. we're doing about 40,000 metres a month at the moment, so there's always work in progress ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we might go back over to weaving and see the warping going. All right. Well, PVC, so this is Australia's only PVC company, mate. Yeah. Uh, Nilex closed their doors in um, 2003. They were in Melbourne making a lot of vinyls and PVC products, but sadly with anyone's left. But um, yeah, we make anything from a 440 gram, 600 grams, um, 900, all the way up to 3 kilos for for uh, x-ray screening machines with lead impregnated in it. Right. So. And when you talk about grams, are we talking grams per square meter. centimetre or metre? Grams per square metre. So like a 400 gram, yeah. is that like... So 2 uh, metres wide, that cloth weighs 1 kilo per metre, per linear metre. So a kilo per linear metre. Yeah. Yeah, right. But we, we sort of call it 8 ounce and 10 ounce and 12 ounce, that's yeah, how we talk, isn't it? And, and canvas, because it's such an old product, PVC didn't come through in about the 70s, 1970s. Yeah. Canvas has been around since the uh, you know, 1600s, 1700s. 700, 700, yeah. And it was all ounces per square, it was all imperial. It was, so if we say 8 ounce, that's eight, 8 ounces per square inch. 8 ounces per square yard? Per square yard. As a woven fabric. Right. When, when we proof it, we add about 30% to it, so that 8 ounce becomes 11 ounce yeah. as a finish product. Yeah. When, we, um, when we're looking at um, the dipping, we might talk more about that. 
how you can we can see the difference between the 8 ounce Australian and what might be an 11 ounce Chinese or overseas product. We must show on that. Okay. So that's an important point as well to bring up. Because yeah. nobody really understands that, do they? Uh, and it's a bit sneaky the way they market it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what they do, they, they're yeah. sneaky. But, uh, it's not very Close that. What are they doing here, James? So, hi Sue. How are you? So here at the weaving, we have a lot of flux water from the weaving process. So, so we're repairing any um, minor uh, threads that pop up and also blow down any fluff. So this happens to all, all of it? Every metre we weave, we blow down. So we don't have any... Uh, Really? Is when we die. If there's fluff balls there, when we die, you know, kick the fluff off and there's a, uh, there's a natural compass in there. You can do this on every roll. Yep. Wow, that's a big process. You only got the one lady doing this or the one machine? Okay. What do you normally have two? Normally two operators up here? Yeah. Normally, one of, the, one of the girls is away this week, but we've got the three tables that are operational now. Yeah right. So wow. Yeah. yeah. It stops stops any seconds what mm -hmm. every value add process. Can you show us like a little knot or something or something you're picking off? I can show you something just from the Yeah. Oh so yeah. if you've got a little fluff ball and then it gets gets dyed and then that comes off you've got a little white patch. Yeah, you've just got like a little pair of tweezers for yeah. one of a better word. But I can show you here because I've got some little errors coming up that just need mending. Not errors as such, that's not really the word for it. See this little thing here? Just pull that out. Just makes anything better yeah. on the edge. Yeah. Wow. And it's only minute. Yeah. So, I haven't really got much to show you on this piece because it's pretty spot on and yeah. that's what we want. Yeah. So, you're not going to find anything too much on this one. Mm. Yeah. Because you don't want to uh, downgrade the seconds, do you? No, that's right. Yeah. So you do that with every metre? Yep. Oh, yeah. You seem to be producing a lot very quickly, but that's the slow process. Does it build up there? Uh, no, no, it builds up at all. Well. So we're weaving uh, about 120,000 metres a month, and those ladies are doing pretty well. Wow. Still in super well, I know, no problem with that. Yeah. That's not an automated, you can't do an automated process? There's a warp again, ball section, so we've Every set of uh, threads there has been done as an individual pull pull on the warmer. Fly it off and move on to the next one. And then we'll get these in for the work. So now we're going to look at the, uh, the warping process.
And when you do that, you sound quite a little lighter. Oh, yeah. 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 Can we go in there and have a look at this one? Yeah. 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 Every time we've got a new fabric, it's a new yarn. Yeah. So if we're making heavy canvas, it's a heavy yarn, light canvas. So if you're doing an 8 ounce as opposed to a 12 ounce, you're going to change every one of these rolls. Every bobbin has to be changed over. Yeah. Yeah. We obviously make a fair bit at one time. So we try to change yeah. down over there. Yeah, yeah that's right. So if we're going to make, if James going to make a 12 ounce or an 8 ounce, he's got to change all these uh, bobbins. Processing, so for dyeing and padding and, and warping. The Italians are weaving specialists. Japanese tend to dominate in the uh, printing. Right. Digital printing and the screen okay. printing. Yeah. What's digital printing? Like, do you, do you get into that at all or still screen printing? Okay, so we only do screen printing here. You can see how intensive a setup is for screen printing and yeah. embroidery. So the digital game came about where you didn't have to the setup costs, where yeah. screen, making screens and designs and colour breakdown. Digital just prints direct from the machine straight onto the fabric. Yeah. But so it makes less than 100 metre jobs, you know, so small superior. jobs you do small jobs. But for the big process run. If you want to do 5,000 metres, yeah. the, the screen printing will, will yeah. eat it up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What do you reckon Kyle? Impressive isn't it? Bloody awesome. All happening right here. Do you have eh? any oh, idea? Do you idea? see our little uh, eco system down here? Yeah. A little duck pond going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the scale of the, uh, the site here, we had to put a, um, a water retention system area in place. Yeah. So what we decided to do was uh, convert it a little oh, yeah. tank for the workers, and next thing we know, we've got a whole bunch of ducks taking over, and it's a nice place to hang out and take your lunch here. Oh yeah, the duck pond. And we know the, the local foxes like it too. We, we, we lose the occasional duck, but uh, yeah, right. We've got some domestic ducks down the corner here, and they got their own little hutch. Oh yeah, <laughs> the own little, um, the own little zoo. We store our finished products. So after all the production's through, uh, the canvas comes in here, 
and drifter orders, army orders, we load containers through this department as well for export. So your brand's Wax for Virtus Textiles and to explain the, um, what's your brand, like your company's Wax for Virtus, but... Yeah, so this, you're talking about the Dynaproof. Dynaproof, yeah, what's yeah. Dynaproof? So Dynaproof over here. Is that just a brand name? Or is that a company name? Yeah, so this is our trademark. Yeah. So Dynaproof refers to our branding for uh, the waterproof canvas, yeah. and then we've got different grades of the Dynaproof. So we've got Cooler Bar, which is a 6 ounce, yeah. Drifter uses, we use Billabong 8 ounce, which Drifter also uses, and we have 12 ounce, DX12. Yeah. So we've got a lot of sub brands under the Dynaproof. Yeah, right. That's our trademark. That's a range of canvas, the Dynaproof, yeah. made by you guys. It's your, your brand, trademark brand. And all our system. And mostly is for the camping industry, the, the, isn't it, the Dynaproof? Correct. Camping, yeah. four-wheel driving, caravaning. Yep. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and these are our standard ranges, so we've got multiple colours on the shelf uh, available. The yellow is something we haven't got into before. Yeah, that's a new challenge for you, Luke. <laughs> yellow? Yeah. What that's can we do with that? That's a PVC, that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So these are PVCs, Aussie made PVC. Pink, we do a bit of pink, don't we? Is that, oh that's PVC as well. That's all PVC, this aisle this is PVC, the yeah. next one over is canvas. Yeah right, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at that. So that's your product range in the Dynaproof? In PVC? Oh this, this is the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, this yeah. gives you an idea of all the different colours. Yeah. Of um, DX12 for instance. And then yeah. we've got a billet bar and a cooler bar, yeah. depending on what the customer wants yeah. in terms of weight. So this is all canvas in here? Yep, yeah, yep. beeswax. Beeswax. That's what we're filling out with army as well. Coming out this next one. Here we go, this is that DX12. Bulldock with the ripstop in it. Here's your Bulldock. What's Bulldock? Bulldock is a canopy canvas. So it's like a DX12 plank. With a ripstop weaving it. Yeah, right. Just for tarps and um, yeah. four wheel drive canopies. Yeah. This is the product you use, Luke. You fill a bong dark navy. Yeah. This yeah. is the bag you get the bag. Yeah. Do you do much ripstop? I mean, in terms of percentage of what you produce or sell, what percentage is ripstop? Yeah, we've got two ripstop fabrics. Here's an orange as well, a that's for railway tarps, orange and grey. But uh, the plain weave tenting would be 80-20. Yeah. Plain weaves versus 20% ripstop. Yeah. yeah. So mainly, but mainly, mainly for tarps. Yeah. 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 These are the camping canvases down here. And like the old um, eight-ounce car key. Is that it there? Philbon car key. Philbon car key. And that's our, you know, sort of our trademark. Most of our products are. Eight ounce car key. That's it. Which is the billabong. Yep. And why is there a smaller roll of fifty? What's come off? What's yeah. So the after you roll a, fifth, a standard fifty, you've got maybe twenty meters the next seam. Yeah. We don't roll a seam in for you. We actually yeah. cut the seams out. So yeah. Sometimes you get the occasional small roll. Yeah. So the seams is just for the manufacturing process. Yeah. When we're joining up the big yeah. three thousand meter rolls. It says each one fifty point two, fifty, fifty point yeah. three. That's the meter. Yeah. That's right. So if there's a weaving fault. We give a, an allowance, so we roll out 50.2, we charge you 50. Oh, I see. Because we allow for a fault. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's always a gross and a net with every roll of canvas. Yeah, right. All the colours Man, you can do any colours, really, can't you? Like, um, we do. You know, pink's not a normal colour in your range, but. The girls no. wanted pink and then so you started doing it. That's how we got onto you originally, wasn't it? That's right. Because uh, we wanted pink and we got a message that oh, we don't have pink and then somehow got onto you and uh, yeah, we can do pink. We made it. So we offer a stock service next day with standard standard colours, yeah. yeah, special colours. Can be done, just a minute of 500 metres, which you're, you commit to. Mm. And you got any orders for Drifter needing going out or? So, 
how does it um you, you just truck it up to us don't we do we pick it up here sometimes or? sometimes you pick up but most yeah. of the time we just truck it out yeah. yeah so these guys are strapping an order here um four customers three rolls in. and your um rip stop can we have a look at that is this the rip stop here yep that's it so in terms of because a lot of people don't quite understand rip stop that's the difference there these are the same products in terms of the body yeah so, so they're both the 12 it's a 12 ounce blended poly cotton as a, as a weave and then this one here we just weave every inch with this raised thread to give it the On ripstop top. look yeah. yeah just a thicker thread because you see a lot of the imported products mostly is ripstop is there a reason for that uh only because Easy ripstop answer. sounds appealing yeah but there's a tenting so it's more of a marketing thing more than anything it's else. It's more marketing, yeah. yeah. So it yeah. does sound tough and cool, doesn't it? Ripstop, you know, we're using a ripstop, but really it's, it's nothing. And once you snag the canvas, it does stop at that weave, but if you're not, if your canvas isn't snagging, there's no point having the ripstop. Yeah, yeah. Because the idea is to stop it from tearing any further. Yeah. But the thing is too, if you've, if you've ripped, say, two inches, right? Yeah. And, and on this you might rip four inches, you've still got to rip, don't you? <laughs> you've, still rip. you've still got to patch it. If yeah. you've got to rip two inches, you still got to patch it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you've got to patch a two inch, it's not much different than patching four. I mean, in, in our industry, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, you know, all our bags, we, we, we don't have a, we don't really have, besides a dog chew on a bag every now and then, once a year, maybe a dog gets on a bag and chews it. Yeah. But we don't get any rips, really. No. You know, so it's just not necessary. But you think also that there's, that can create a... Um, An abrasion. Abrasion point. So abrasion if that's point. wearing, yep. say, you know, a weekend a bag that's thrown on the ground all the time, that can wear. And you, you can see the, the white spots start to come through because yeah. that's the high spot having so the So as soon as you've through. worn that through, yep. then you're going to... That, that, that's losing its waterproofness. Correct. Yeah. And creating a weakness. So in, in the industry that we're doing, the camping for drive industry, it's not a good as it's not the right product as opposed to the, the standard weave. No. For that, that's the main reason. For technical it? performance, no. Unless you want the look of it, Luke, because it looks, you know. I don't quite. Oh yeah, I didn't never like the look of it. No. Probably that's why I didn't know when I started. I didn't never like the look. Yeah. Right. And that's why I started with this. But particularly that, if that wears, you're going to wear the the coating off the top. Yeah. And then you're going to let impurities in, and that's the starts to break down or can break down. Yeah. Now truck tarps, you need that. Truck tarps and the canopy at the back of a. Uh, a, a ute canopy, the, yeah, yeah. It's but it's no totally different use. It's no thicker or anything. Is. It's the same thickness. It just same thickness. What, what so, same body of the canvas is just yeah. that one thread. And you mentioned too about waterproofing, that where the water tends to to get stuck on that seam. Does that happen much? Do you think, or um, is it less waterproof? Fresh camps. Yeah, they'll both leave the mill totally waterproof. But as yeah. that proofing on that high spot, you can see this sort of where you can already the white spots starting to come out there. That will eventually give way yeah. much sooner than what this one. Yeah. And also in terms of the weaving process, you're saying that it's easier to weave the ripstop. Is that right? Like it, because small bits can't get noticed so easy. Yeah. So when we're inspecting after weaving, it's much harder to see a fault. So yeah. a lot of them just go through. Just go through. No, it doesn't easy. really matter. B yeah. Visually, it's not there. Yeah. Whereas this. Um, and that's probably the reason why they, they, you know, like a lot of the imported products come through the ripstop because it's just an easier product to, to manufacture. Correct. Mm. All right, we'll clear that up. Very good. So, have a look at the dyeing. We'll look at the uh, proofing. Proofing, Making yeah. Making the dyeing proof. Yeah. Yeah, so James, this is one of our new products. You know, look at that there too. That's an 8 ounce billabong. That's been on the back of my truck for probably four years, three, four years. Always in, like I don't Just park my car, car, truck under cover. Permanently it's outside? Permanently outside. That's and amazing. that tops all the weather, all the sun, and uh, it's still waterproof, no problem, it's, unless I have it like this where it's open. So that's just an 8 ounce billabong. Yeah, it's holding up very well. And, uh, it's it's and that's uh, PVC, same time, we have put both these in the same time. So that's uh, yep. PVC, I suppose. Well, it's PVC, I'm not sure what grain or weight that'd be. Yeah, that's our Endeavour 600, Luke. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Australian made, so that's still hot. What you'll find is a lot of the um, so if it's Asian made, the, the plasticide, it goes all stiff and hard and brittle, ah, and then it'll start to rip. Yeah, because yeah, well that's the point, because this has been in, again, still soft. hasn't been undercover for the whole time, and it's still nice and subtle, yeah. whereas the, the imported stuff will go will go brittle. Yeah, brittle, yeah, that's yeah. the UV breaking it down. And once that happens, it's stuffed, eh? It's I mean, you, It's no good, eh? You're back to buying again. Yep. This is something that Andrew Page used to make. Yep. One of his, so that um, would have been your product? Yes, that was our product. It's a, uh... Is that a canvas, or what's that? Okay, that's an air textured polyester. Yeah, so right. uh, it's a synthetic. 
Yeah. It's purposely built for, for the army for um, load carriage and. So it's tough. Doesn't need to breathe, of course, and it's, it's tougher. Correct. Nylon, nylon stronger than than cotton. Yes. Correct. And so this is one of our new products too. We'll cover bag. Big market for these. So yeah. this is uh, one we just designed as an example of our products, and that's uh, eight ounce. That's an eight ounce black. That's your Billabong black. Yes. Yeah. That's right. And um, got a bit of little waterproof zip, little pocket on the front. Oh wow. And Great story, we've got our Jerry. stitching going right through. The thing is too, with our bags, you know, we can we can put a warranty on these that if you know if a bag gets uh, broken or damaged, we can repair it. You know, and we don't have to very much because we build them well from good material. We don't need to very much, but. That's the thing, if you buy an overseas made bag, you can't go back and ask them to repair it, but we can repair all that products, you know, and that's the advantage we have. So a lot of design that we do, and this is real nice world testing well, right you're, really, you're really lifting the, the appearance of them? And yeah, the, yeah. You can stencil it yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's still a little prototype, and also we're going to put inside this the, uh, the PVC liner, because it'll be your PVC that you send down to FlexiMate. Oh, yep. So um, that's the thing inside here. See, because you've got to strap this on. There's the zip. And if you want to empty this, this is full of you know beer bottles and everything, oh, and it's all a mess, bag. right? Yeah, yeah. It's a rubbish bag. So if you want to empty that, you don't want to pull all this off, right? right? So it's we're going to have a PVC liner. liner that's velcroed in. Lift that out, dump it, put it back in. Okay. And that'll be your what sort of PVC would that be? That's the same same as this probably. Yeah, it's a 700 gram PVC we made for Flexi Mate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the boys in there. Onto that right at the moment. So, pretty awesome. keen to get that. I've got a lot of people interested in this, um, this bag because it's something that goes on all the four drives. And if these straps ever broke, come loose. This gets sewn all the way through, but if that ever broke, it comes back, we repair it, ship it out again, you know. So, yeah. So, that's it from the factory, and now it's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is. That's so it. logical. Look at that. It's a beautiful weave, isn't it? Like, you've got a. <laughs> well, I think so, Luke. Yeah, it's a. You know, it's lovely canvas. That'll, that'll serve years of use there. And the waterproofing, I noticed you got some um, hanging over here, you know, that you're testing sort of thing. Yep. How long it. would that waterproofing likely to last for? Um, well, once again, if it's permanently outside, I think you'll be doing well with five years. Yeah. Uh, but with a camper, folding in, folding out, uh, storage, we've got 25 years, sometimes yeah. people are saying, you know, yeah. but it just depends on the use. Yeah. And if, for example, that's been out, yeah, at least four years now, what can we do to re-waterproof that if we wanted to? Have you got products that you recommend? Yeah, or? yeah we, we do a clear dynaproof uh, tub where you can um, um, re reapply the proofing. Dip so, it in there? Yep. Yeah. Or paint it on? or Paint it on with a rag or a brush. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that something we can buy for you? Yes, yeah, sure. I had Sorry. a guy just yesterday come to our factory. He had a tent and he wanted some waterproofing for his canvas. Yeah, right. He had a... Uh, I can't remember the brand, Queensland brand, and I said, well, I don't have any, but um, that's something maybe we could we could offer. Yeah, we do we do a dynaproof one. I'll, I'll be honest, they're, they're available in a lot of camping stores as well, different brands, but yeah. we certainly make our dynaproof one to, we match, buy that from you? to match that proofing. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And it's just a, a liquid we can put in like one litre bottles and send out, or 500 litre? We, can, we make them in two litre, four litre, and 20 litre. Oh, yeah. So you can buy, have a look buy at a that? Yep. This is our Dynaproof brand. So basically this is a Dynaproof system. So you'll see the white canvas coming in. It's been woven, bleached pure white. It's also been run through the stator for dimensional stability to control the shrinkage. And now we're putting the all important um, proofing process in. So with that, you're saying it's been pre-stretched already. Yeah. That's the important point too. Pre-stretched pre and dried. That's right. See, in yeah. canvas, look, you have to have shrinkage because basically you guys are cutting it and stitching it. You're putting holes in it. With your sewing machines, you're punching needle holes through. Somehow those needles, those needle holes have to fill up. Yeah. So that's the shrinkage take up. Yeah. So we control it to be 2%. Right. Down the roll only. There'll be no, nothing across the roll, yeah. down the roll will shrink. Right. So then your needle, the needle will take up on the side. Yeah, right. And this is just, uh, what, what's that liquid there? Okay, so the camera on this side, you can see, um, so 
this liquid is our secret herbs and spices basically. What makes our diner fruit process what it is. So in there you've got the acrylic binders holding together that's with pigment for colour staining. You have the waterproofing waxes, you have the Georgia um, inhibitors and also UV stabilizers. So it's UV stabilized. UV stabilized, yeah. Mildew inhibitors, the pigments, binders. And, yeah. and waterproofing waxes. And waterproofing waxes. And that's yeah. your secret formula. That's our secret formula. Um, it's what makes our canvas so special. Um, yep. And this, that's the finished colour. That's like a, that's, that's a finished colour. That's it. What we then, we, it's a two part process. So after we've done this first part, we'll actually be, uh, we'll be why is that? We'll have a, we'll have a double proofing process. Right. We find the first one's like an undercoat, it's like painting a house. Yeah. You just get a second, much better finish. You do it twice. With a, with a two pass system. Yeah, right. That's, so that's obviously the first part. And you just do it through the, just run it through the same process same, again? Same process, yeah. Right. Just like And you got to dry that? There's, there's a lot of uh, skill and engineering that goes into that mechanism there, which is obviously our secret. But well, that's, that's drying it above here, isn't it? That's drying it up here. So that's coming off dry here? Comes out dry? Right. So it doesn't take much to dry then, because you've got a massive drying room in the other one, when you put in the inside. Yeah, that's a little bit of a 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 bit of if you, once you've done this, then you can spread through it if you want to do. Yep. That's right, yeah. yeah. It also has what? The good point sitting in a camp, so it makes it very uncomfortable. So, uh, this process allows the breeder to do it. Yeah, right. And that's. Otherwise, you might as well use PVC. Yeah. So, that's the important point with a camp, is that's breathable. Absolutely, just as important as waterproofing. Yeah. You've got to have it breathable. Otherwise, you might as well use a plastic sheet. Yeah. And how can, it, can you explain how it can be waterproof and breathable at the same time? Because that's like a funny concept, isn't it? It is. So we've got a, there's a lot of engineering that goes into the design of the weave and the, and the uh, tightness of the thread and the yarn of the thread, the, the um, gauge of the thread. That's all over in the, in the, in the, in the weaving process, in the weaving and also how tight it is. That's even important. the viscosity of the, uh, the proofing mix, our secret action spice in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it all goes together and then the way we apply it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really fine art. Is there a measure of how, breath how breathable it is? Uh, there is, yep. And there's also waterproofing, so we can show that in the laboratory. Yeah, okay. And the breathability, why is it important for canvas to be breathable? Well, otherwise you'd be sitting in a tent on a, uh, on, in tropical conditions, it'll start raining on the inside because yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. build up all your condensation. Yeah. And it'll just start dripping so down. the more cotton in the product is the more breathable. Or yep. the more nylon is, the nylon of course is... Yeah, full well, synthetic, yeah. like a, a dome tent from Kmart, it's, it's not going to be very comfortable yeah. compared to a cotton canvas. Yeah, right. yeah. So that's almost finished product. You've got to get dipped one more time and then you're done. And then we do a testing process on every batch before we release it to you. Every batch. Make sure you're getting a uh, And this I notice is uh, your red stuff. That's the bulldog. Yep, before it's been proof. Bulldog, yeah. yeah. So That's you can really see it there. You can see the ripstop, yeah? Made for tarp island. That's it. Far out, that's an old sign, eh? Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez. And uh, you're saying it's Australian cotton. Is there a reason you use Australian cotton? Oh, it's, it's got a reputation for um, more, better durability. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the important point that we haven't touched on before. You know, we're talking about how the canvas is made in Australia, but it's made from Australian cotton. Yeah, and, and likewise, we, we, we like to support Australian industry. And you can probably buy the cotton overseas a lot cheaper yourself, I'm sure. Yeah, we could. And has is, is Australian cotton got a reputation of being a better cotton than overseas, like the way it's produced because of our climate or our Absolutely, soil? yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing is we're so far away, there's no spinning industry left here. Unfortunately, yeah. with the contracting of industry, from the cotton plant that the farmer grows to the yarn we buy, that process is done overseas. Yeah, so if if there was a spinner here, we'd be able to buy it. We'd, yeah. we'd love it. Can't. So the cotton bales, are they called a gin? Or what are they called, the cotton bale? Uh, it's a bale of cotton that goes cotton. to a gin to make the yarn, yeah. Right, and that's done in Indonesia or? Yeah, we source from Indonesia, Malaysia. Yeah. yeah. We try to avoid China, to be honest, but um, just because yeah. 
we, we, we look, it's close to Indonesia and Malaysia, a lot closer. And, yeah. sort of and that's what they put, that's the process of getting the, the cotton thread, the spinning and process. putting the uh, nylon in there as well. The blending of the, the blending, yeah. yeah. So Australian cotton, but it's 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 work, it's uh, spun spun overseas spun into Indonesia, 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 and we buy the yarn. bring it back here. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton, yeah. Yeah. So young Callum Toff, when he's on the machines, a friend of ours, Callum, he's he's uh, only young fella, 14, 15 years old, and he's on the um, harvesters up there, uh, St George around that area. Yeah, yeah, okay. and uh, he's harvesting cotton, and that goes to basically Indonesia. Spun into yarn and then brought back here and then you weave it into cotton. That's so it. that's an important point as well, it's Australian cotton. Yeah. So we take it from weaving right through all the processes, but yeah, we, we don't grow cotton and we don't spin yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to buy a cotton <laughs> farm. Yeah. That'll we, get you vertical. We've thought about loop, we've got enough control on what we do here, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. We'll have a look at the uh, laboratory, laboratory, eh? So this is where we do R&D. Okay, so in here we've got anything from colour testing. So we'll get a, a swatch of canvas with a master and it'll be a colour read to make sure we're as close as possible at the X there um, before we release the dyeing process. Okay. We've got our water's controlled by Hunter Water, so we, we discharge. But between acid and alkali, we've got to be. We've got alarm sensors on there, so if we're out of oh. out of spec, the, the water board come out and uh, tell us. So that's important. That the water you're putting into the process is the right acid alkaline content. And plus, our waste water that we release yes. is not yeah. environmentally damaging. Yeah. yeah. And this is all uh, Oscan for testing. Yep. So every batch, we uh, we we take a uh, we retain a cutting of every roll under the agreement we have. For security with the, the, the right. defense department. Roll 80, roll, roll 80, 79, so. 78. So that every soldier's life is protected at night, which is what we offer with this process. Um, we need to be able to retain the cutting of every roll. Yeah. So we can retest if there's any problem. And do you store that? We store it, yep. Yeah, right. It's a big, big warehouse full of... It. How long do you got to keep that for? Uh, for two years. Right. We, we keep every batch. And then you just got to chuck it out or...? Yep. Yeah. But, and we got to extinguish it. We can't let anyone else get their hands on yeah. it. <laughs> and this is because that's quite soft, right? So the difference between that and canvas is it's got the canvas has got more polyester and less cotton. Oh, it's also the weave loop. So it's there's right. a lot more a lot more cotton in it. It's 75 percent cotton, but also the weave that's designed into a twill weave. So you can see the uh, the groove ah, in it. Yeah, yeah. So your cargo pants and your denim jeans, they've all got a, a, a twill in it because it's more flexible. You're right. Whereas yeah. canvas is designed to be watertight. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. drum tight. So it's 75 percent cotton. 25% polyester where a standard khaki billabong is 60% 65% polyester, 35% cotton. cotton. Yeah. Yeah, other way around. Yeah. So it's polyester rich, we call this cotton rich. Right. 75%. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm learning a lot, I can tell you. <laughs> That's good. So with canvas, we actually have um, two waterproofing tests before we release every batch. Every batch. Every batch. So we this is basically called a cone test. You know, anyone can do this with a canvas product, but you, you form basically the canvas into a cone. You put them into a beak like this, and you fill up 50 mils of water, and you basically pour that into there. Pretty simple test. Simple test, but it's the most brutal one of all. Because that that point that it forms and holding that water, we allow that for 24, we sit that overnight. Right. And we don't let any, um, And that's uh, yeah, less, that, than one, less than one mil of water, and it's a fail, we have to reprocess. Really? Right. <laughs> so a mil is like a oh, drop. Yeah. One drop, yeah. So if one drop comes through, what do you do with that roll? The whole well, roll's gone? We reprocess it, just with the waterproofing aspect. Oh, I see, you can run that back through again. Well, we can, we can rerun re it, yep, for the waterproofing. All right. All the UV, UV stabilizers and the pigments and all that, that's all encapsulated, that's okay, but the waterproofing. Yep. Yeah, right. So that's, that one. that's an important point with the canvas. So every batch is tested. Every and by, you said it's a brutal test because by t when you form that cone, you, you really concentrate it into a single point, aren't you? In that point, yeah. Yeah. yeah so water in there, cone point there, and any leakage through there, it's, it's, it's the harshest one of all. Yeah. True test. The other one you might hear a bit about is um, hydrostatic or waterhead. What's a waterhead you canvas? Now, waterhead is when they form 
this like, and that forms a lid, right? And they shoot the water through, and it's a scale over the back here, up to one metre. Now, we want a water head somewhere around 800 millimetres, okay? So the water pressure comes in, and this is forming the lid. It's actually forcing the water through the canvas as a lid. Now, sometimes you might hear of a coated canvas going to three metres. That's not ideal. Well, it sounds like, oh, wow, it's gonna hold three, three metres of water head. It's not gonna breathe. Yeah. Okay, so you don't want it too waterproof in this aspect. Yeah. So long as you've got a cone test, pass, and 800 millimetres here, that's when you know you've got a good balance. Right. You don't because want getting a 300 millimetre, three metre water head. The breathability is an important part of, of what we're doing. Particularly, well, with tents, you know, with, it, with canvas bags, what we're doing doesn't matter so much. No. Maybe for your clothes, keep them fresh, but, uh, but for normal tents, but you, the breathability you, is important. You, your dot trailers, Luke, you want to have a, yeah. a comfortable yeah. tent. Yeah, What's the point of buying yeah. a $30,000 canvas trailer and having a, a tent that leaks or, yeah. or condensates? Yeah. So we're using a 12 ounce uh, grey, aren't we? As a you know, roofing? Crazy Dogs. Um, so for our rooftop tents, our dot trailers, we're using basically that 12 ounce. Yeah. And what do you think, like, there's not many tents made with 12 ounce anymore, but Jason, he's been doing it for a long time and he swears by the 12 ounce. And I said, no, just don't make it so heavy, but I wanted it lighter, but he says, no, nah, use 12 ounce, and um, so we do. And you reckon that's, because like if you're inside there and you close, close the, the windows, it's pitch black, you can't, there's, there's no light coming through. It's, um, it's a heavy, it's, it's a heavy it's product. It's thicker it? and stronger. Yeah. But once again, for a tent, we don't think it's necessary, but that's your personal choice. So you're offering a more expensive and a premium grade, yeah. but the Billabong does work well in roof and walls as well. And, yeah. and we design the fabric for that. For that, Even though it's lighter, we have yeah. finer threads, but more of them. Yeah, that's right. how we pack the leave in. Yeah, so it's a finer thread. Finer thread. Well, Jason swears by the 12, but um, yeah. we're having a good run with it, you know, and uh, it's a big tent too, you know, so. Yeah. I did ask him to do the front awning out of eight, but I might have to have another chat to him about it. Because it's a more expensive product too, isn't it? It is. More expensive. Yeah. Yep. A lot more. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe we it. can um, <coughs> drop down to the eight. Still more than adequate. Good breathability. Great tent canvas, absolutely. Yeah. We sell two to one, eight ounce compared yeah. to 12 ounce. Can we talk about that with um, the, the ounce? Because you call out a 12 ounce. So that's 12 ounces per square yard before you go through the dipping process. Correct. So you've seen here the weaving process is when we've got the raw yarn and the, and the weaving. So we, that's the, traditionally the, 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 the Scots always talked about what the base weight was. That's the real canvas. And then depending on what proofing process you used, added more weight or less and more weight. Yeah. So a 12 ounce woven weight. By the time we had the wax and all the waterproof and the dynaproof process, That'll become a 15 ounce. Yeah, so if we weighed that, that's a finished product. It says 12, but if we weighed that square yard of that, it's going to be more than 12 ounces. It'll be a 15 ounce. It'll be 15. But whereas I definitely know that the Chinese or a lot of the imported camper trails, they advertise, say, a 12 ounce, but I've seen at the shows, not so much anymore, but I used to be at the shows all the time, you'd, you'd be able to see an Australian manufactured tent with a 12 ounce roof. And, an, and a Chinese one with 12 ounce roof, and you could, it was night and day, and that's, nobody really realised that's what it is, because they said it's 12 ounce, but it's not 12 ounce. No, that's right. So the Chinese say, well we say the Chinese, they're imported campers from China, yep. they call it a 12, but that's after the proofing. Yep. So that's how they do it. And, and we're still talking imperial by calling it an ounce, an ounce per square yard. Mm. So we believe we should still be talking about the base weight, which is yep. what the campus is and then add the waxing on. So you, you're based on the Scotty system, Correct. and they just created their own system, I suppose. I mean, it's cheating away a little bit. They're calling it 12, but it's not compared to the historic Australian English system no. of 12 ounce before before the dying. So your billabong that you use in your bag is eight ounce, but that's actually 11 ounce after dying. That's right, yeah, which is this here. So that's, that's, that's really an 11, but we call it an eight ounce. Yep. Whereas if that's a Chinese product, which is the King's range and a lot of the imported products, they advertise it as a range, they would call that an 11, yep. where we call that an 8. So, I mean, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, as long as people understand the difference. If they're advertising a 12, right. you've got to realise an imported 12 is really only a like a, a 9, I suppose. Because it's about 30% the, the weight that's added on. 30% added. Mm. Depending on what 
wax as you use and yeah, there's, there's yeah. proofing and there's proofing as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you use a system that dates back to 300 years the, the, where it was invented and the first start of the industrial, industrial yeah, age. Yeah, and, and maximising that balance between breathability and waterproofness. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of technical aspects to the canvas, isn't it? In every aspect, in every production process we do. Mm. And you're particularly building product for the end user, aren't you? You're not just designing camps saying, here it is, guys. You're designing product that suits the application that they're using it for. Very particularly, aren't you? Correct. Absolutely. Like whether it's uniforms, you know, for breathability or tent canvas. I mean, you're designing products specifically for that purpose. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And Aussies are renowned, you know, we're the leaders in four-wheel driving and operating and, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to deal with the snowy mountains and the tropical North Queensland and we've got the Nullarbor Plains. Mm. They're just brutal weather conditions. That yeah, yeah. The, the Chinese factory wouldn't have a clue what they're, yeah. you know, they've never been involved with it. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we do have brutal, because the sun too is so yeah, harsh the in Australia. UV, the UV in Australia and New Zealand is the harshest in the world. Yeah. Yeah, you get anybody from overseas Europe, Jake comes over and they first thing they say, how strong the sun is, you know, and it is, doesn't it? We don't sort of, well, we know, but we're, growing up we're just it. used to it, you yeah. know, but it is a lot harsher over here, and uh, and so you've got that UV built into it. Yep. Yeah. Wow, interesting. This is Luke. Hey, mate, how you going? Luke. This is Luke. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the drifter. Hello, mate. Just for you. So we're so pulling so that apart. Yeah, so this is called an Instron machine, which measures the tear and tensile properties. So this is a tear test where we've cut the fabric and we've, the jaws of the machine are pulling this apart. And we're testing tear strength. Wow. Uh, so just testing each batch to make sure it meets your standards. Minimum standard, yep. Is there any, um, you know, Australian standards or you just okay. got your own standards? So the test method has an Australian standard to it and then every application for defence has a different fabric and a different okay. requirement. So if you're providing stuff for the defence, you've got to prove that it's uh, got certain tear strength. That's right. So with the military fabric, for the uniform with the infrared technology, there's actually 44 tests. This is one of them. Wow. <laughs> 44 tests. 44 tests. We do them all in-house first, because yeah. then we have to send it to an independent laboratory wow. to have it all assessed as well. Wow. But we don't like to send it out there with a cost on it without knowing ourselves that we're comfortable. Yeah. So a very stringent process in, in your camp. So there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of making that the best campus in the world. There is, absolutely. And if that was a ripstop, that's going to be a little bit, that, do you notice it? That will, that's where it will have an advantage. Yeah. It, it'll just, because we've already ripped that. it, it'll, yeah. it'll resist every, every large crossover. Yeah. It'll have greater resistance. Yeah. Wow. And that's your spectrometer, did you say? Yes, yeah, so this is a, um, you can see here, an infra near infrared NIR spectrophotometer. So this measures the, um, the infrared properties of the canvas under night scopes. So if the enemy soldiers had a pair of night goggles on, um, the idea is before the infrared was in there, they could see a whole platoon moving through. Whereas now, uh, the way each colour reflects against each, itself makes it now impossible to see at night time. Wow. So, and this machine assesses whether every colour, the way it reflects against each other one, um, whether it's a pass or not. Right. And you do the same for the, the Navy and Air Force as well? Um, do they have their infrared built in? No, only the Army has infrared. They don't need it. Yeah, they don't need it. No, probably wouldn't, would they? No, they're, they're, they're okay on their boats and up in the planes. So. Yeah, very interesting. And you, pr you make material for... Uh, did you say the Singapore Army or does Singapore have an army or? Yep, so we've got um, Papua New Guinea Army, obviously Australia, New Zealand, um, Malaysia and Singapore. Um, yeah, so basically the southeast Pacific countries. Yeah, right. Any more on the horizon that you're trying to, are you sort of, is that your job to sort of constantly try to yeah, get I'm, new customers? That's, that, that is my job, Lou. I've got to make sure we keep growing the business and looking for new opportunities. So um, but at the moment, um, we're probably looking for more materials to look after our current customers. Yeah, right. Rather yeah, than pretty flat out with what you got. Oh yeah, yeah. We've been growing at 10% per annum, which is still gets, a, gets, gets tough to finance and manage as well if you go any yeah. faster than that. Growing so companies are a lot harder to manage than the static company, aren't they? <laughs> it is. You're growing, it's, everything changes and... Yeah. 
Yeah. But it's important to keep growing there because you never know where your next leakage is going to be as well. So. Absolutely. I always say, yeah, if you're not growing, you're going backwards, aren't you? you know? yeah. Because standing still in business is going backwards, eh? Because yeah. the market keeps going. But if you're standing still, you are going backwards, you know, and that's why it's yeah, Everyone's got their eyes on you. Someone's got their eyes on you trying to knock your business off. Right? Yeah, I mean, we're finding that a lot now, you know. If pe people want what you've got, and if they can't get that, they try to take what you've got, you know, and yeah. we're starting to find that now. You know, we've been successful in different things, and then... The whole way along, people have copied in our kitchens, copied in our drawers, but no one ever lasts. I mean, there was several people to copy in kitchens, then they don't last very long. Yeah. Same with the drawers, don't last very long, you know, and um, so you, on it you, goes. You've now got to defend your position. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. Yeah. But, I mean, they're, they're, if they're copying, they're already five years behind you, because by the time they copy this, you're on the I'm next already one. over here, mate. Yeah. Yeah. As, same as you, you've got to keep moving, don't you? We're moving keep together. shifting the goalposts. Yeah. Similar thought Makes process. it harder for them. Absolutely. What's this machine? I saw this last okay, time. Okay, so here. this is a uh, this is an interesting one for canvas and outdoor fabric. So this is called a uh, accelerated weathering tester. So it's made by a company in America, a QUV. So um, basically, it simulates one month in the machine is the same as one year outside. Wow. So it accelerates the weathering process. A month in here. A month in there. So it's got all cyclonic controls and temperatures and. Um, condensations and rainfall and yeah, really UV all exposure, that. all that gives it everything. Yeah, and you can get it. So if we're trying something new, yeah, wow. we'll always do a test first in here, and we'll still do the, still do the physical outside test as well. Mm -hmm. But this one gives us the accelerated uh, result. Wow. And so then, do you have like a team of um, like if 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 say if doesn't quite meet your standards or you've got a new product that you've got to tweak, how do you, do you come up with that change of formula or you've got uh, engineers working for you? A lot more technical people than me Luke, so yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a technical manager, we've got Paunch here who does the testing, dedicated testing, uh, we've got people doing R&D, mm -hmm. the people in uh, chemistry as well, mm -hmm. chemists working on uh, yeah. new formulations, yeah. and the chemical companies come to us as well, always yeah. offering new products, yeah. so we've got to assess them as well. And we're talking about young fellas too, do you offer apprenticeships? Like if, if there's a young fella out there looking for a job and he likes what he sees out there, could he come to you and is there an apprenticeship in this process or? Sadly not in textiles, uh, but in our um, engineering division we have uh, apprentice fitters and turners. So um, yeah. we have a couple of apprentices there, yeah. Uh, but so yeah, weaving and we just have to in-house train. Yeah right. So it's not an apprenticeship to us, but there's still a lot of fun to learn, isn't it? How long does it take? If I walked in off the street as an 18-year-old and I wanted to operate a machine, how long would it take me to do that? You'd be an assistant on average for at least 12 months before we'd give you the chance to be the leading hand on the machine. Yeah, right. I, I might be able to do it a bit quicker than that. You know? <laughs> yeah, you pick things up pretty quickly. I reckon but, uh, so, you'd be a good proofer. Yeah, <laughs> could be a job for me. So, but you're always looking to... Um, do you get many young fellas coming through? Or is it, well, where, where do most of your staff come? Just yeah, local well, or? The, the Hunter Valley's been through some ups and downs economically as well. Uh, the mining downturn. Well, we used to lose a lot of talent to the mines because they were paying such premium. It's hard being in an area close to mines, isn't it? Because it's so easy for them to get out of here and go and sit on a dump truck, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and it's, it's a big incentive to move away and uh, it's hard to compete with the mines too, you know. I mean, yeah. But um, a little bit of a downturn. Well, we know the second that mining turned downturn, the mining boom downturn, we noticed an instant change in some staff's attitude. And, and you know, inquiries. Because they're talking, through. oh, you know, I'll head off to the mines, you know, and next thing, bang, it's silence, you know, and they head down and concentrate on their job. So yeah. it's difficult, but do um, you find it difficult to get staff always? Um, no, we never find it difficult. There's a lot of word of mouth in a small town like this in the yeah. mainland region. Yeah. Um, there's always someone looking. Yeah. Um, we don't advertise for very long at all. Quite yeah. often it's word of mouth of the, yeah. the guys that want to make the You've got a pretty big pool of, of uh, like what's within we do. The, the 30, 40 kilometres of here, you've got how many people? A few hundred thousand. Yeah, probably. Yeah. A lot, we we, we find no one wants to travel more than 15, 20 k, so they're all, we don't go to Newcastle, people don't come out here, for instance. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, we go Carry Carry, Chestnut, um, Maitland, Rutherford, mm. and um, the only downside is they're not skilled. Um, no one comes to us with dyeing or weaving because textiles has been smashed. Mm. And can you get, can you like three, four, five, seven visas, are you able to uh, get uh, skills from, you know, like India, like your chief guy, like he's Australian. He's as Aussie as I come now. Yeah. But yeah, um, can you get, uh, imp can you import some labour or? I believe so, but we, we haven't had to and yeah. we haven't gone out of bath yet, yeah. but um, we'd always, I think there'd be the, the second 
plan B. Mm-hmm. Plan A is just to work with uh, what's, what's currently available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. Well, appreciate it, James. It was great. It was um, fascinating insight. To, there's so much involved in your factory. Enormous factory, too. So many processes that we just didn't really know about. And uh, it's really interesting. Our viewers, our Drifter fans, going to love watching that. So, yeah. Well, look, it's, um, we learn a lot from what you do, too. So walking through Gloucester, it's yeah. a different world for me, too. But, um, yeah, we're certainly proud of what we do here. And um, um, it, it is disappointing when you hear that there's no industry left and there's no canvas made here. I mean, you can see our investments here. We, we, yeah. we, we're here to stay and we do, we yeah. do it pretty well and we do believe we lead the world. And, uh, yeah, because we say a lot, Australia's best canvas award. That's why I say that constantly. And, I mean, and we've shown today why that's, why that's true, isn't it? Because I've been here before, 12 months ago. I know, you know, I've seen this before and that's why I've been saying Australia's got the best canvas in the world. We say that a lot. And, um, and we've shown why that, that's the case. That's, you know? why, that's why it is, yeah, because we don't compromise on it, on any aspect we do here. Chemicals or production processes or inspection of quality all the way from step to step. Yeah. It's, there's yeah. no shortcuts. Yeah. And we work together a lot too, you know, we catch up for our coffee every few months and, uh, you know, what we started from, just a few simple little bags to what we're doing now is a lot of that knowledge has come from you and, and your contacts as well. And that's, you know, it gets onto your favourite saying, localisation, not globalisation, isn't it? So that's, uh, you know, one of my favourite sayings now as well. And that's, you know, industries, Aussie industries working together. is like, I can't do this on my own and you can't do it on your own either. But industries collaborating. I'm an end user and you're a manufacturer. And us being able to work so closely together is what I really find uh, enjoyable and uh, interesting, you know, and what really drives me as well, to be able to work together with other Aussie companies. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great, isn't it? Awesome. I, I, I come away every meeting we have, Logan, wonder how many ideas we, we just invented together as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, we've got to keep doing those catch ups, and uh, yeah. it's great we, we do live close together and um, accessible. Yeah. And yeah, yeah what, what we see Drifter doing is um, amazing. You know, the way, you've, uh, the way you've taken on social media and your, your, marketing, your marketing manufacturer. It's, uh, mm. it's, it's unique too, so mm. mate, keep up the good Because that's your sort of battle here. You're mostly a, a manufacturer and you mostly sell to distributors, so you don't have uh, so much end user retail uh, contact. No. Whereas we have direct, we're, we're direct selling to the consumer, and uh, that's the difference with you. So, in a way, we can tell sort of your story as well, which is what we're doing. Yep. And that's the difficult part for you guys, isn't it? You don't have a direct you know, no. uh, so much social media presence because you're not selling directly to the customers, you're selling to all other manufacturers. Correct. Our business transaction day to day will never invoice a consumer. Yeah. 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 But we know our branding and what we do is so important to get out to the consumer so they're educated mm-hmm. as to why our products are better compared yeah. to that's substitutes the challenge, of coffee. That's, that's the challenge. The challenge. Yeah. And that's why we've got to have a close relationship with a good customer like Drifter mm-hmm. and many others out there who are conscious of selling up and offering the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're president of the Australian Textile Industry Association, is that right? Uh, yes, so there's the um, Specialised Textiles Association, and yeah, I'm into my second year as president, and that encompasses anything from um, marine trimmers, making boat covers and canopies, to upholsterers, to shade sale and um, awning manufacturers. Yeah. So it's quite diverse. That's an Australian group. It's an Australian group, yep. yeah. about 200 members. Yeah, right. Did I end up getting signed up? Or I can't remember. Well, you, you did, you did no, uh, back me up, Luke, so thank you for your membership. And oh, good. <laughs> I haven't been to a meeting yet, but... Uh, no, but you're well known within the group and uh, what you do in your marketing, and yeah. we're actually going to be asking you for a bit of help too and guidance as to how we can market ourselves better to let consumers know that our trade still exists mm-hmm. and people want a higher quality um, shade sale or they want it to be installed with a proper licence rather than a, a do-it-yourself backyard work you know yeah. um, there's, a, there's a strong industry still in a day that's that's the important thing getting the message out to the consumer and, and educating or letting them know what we do and uh, that that's the ultimate goal of marketing and uh, that's a, a big part of the step isn't it you know it's hard to have an industry without an end user so um, that's what we do a lot of of course as, as, as a manufacturer and end user yes so it's great that we can share you as, and bring along as part of that and uh, you know, if you were an overseas uh, producer, there's no way we would have the contact that we have. I mean, half the ideas that I come up with are ideas that we sit around having a coffee and, and talk about. You know, the swags. Why don't we do it this way or and, that way? Oh, uh, no, that's not going to work. And all sorts of things. You know, I show James all the products I'm thinking about, like that. You know, the wheel, the wheel, the the bag on the back, and 
this is something we might have talked about six months ago and then I start making it and we you know we come up with a lot of ideas together yeah even, and not only that just a lot of your contacts too you know we Andrew Page and a lot of those guys uh, even seeing your rain tent and then you were ki you were catching it in a milk crate or something and I said well, why don't you go with the bladders you know yeah, and, uh, that's you exactly know, that was an amazing concept and yeah. you just needed that little bit of yeah, you put me on a Fleximate I flew straight down there <laughs> and then I mean Fleximate do a lot of stuff for us now they're making they're making PVC buckets they're making the liners for those new bags they're doing the bladders we're doing a lot of water bladders, like those water bladders are going off, 60 and 110 litre water bladders, we're selling a heap of those, and that's all your PVC. And that's 100% drink water safe too, that's that's your stuff. It's certified, yep, yeah. certified to Australian standard, 4020 for yeah, right. human consumption. Yep. And you test that down in your laboratory there and... Um, oh yeah, and we have to renew it every year, so yeah. um, there's a renewal process. Yeah. But yeah, that's the way Australian industry is going, Look, I think we're, you know, once upon a time, 80s and 90s would have been a competitor. You know, they're, they're also cutting and sewing fabric. Yeah. Now we've got to work together. That's the key thing. Especially thing. working together we've and got networking. To stick together, work together, network together, and uh, you know, um, share our knowledge and, and, and all stick together. And that's sort of what we're doing. Come up with a solution. Yeah. Mm. All right, really appreciate it, mate. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Luke and, and, uh, and Drifter, thank you for uh, your support, and let's keep it going. Mm. All right, we'll catch up you back at the coffee house in a couple of months, I suppose. <laughs> Look forward to it. All right, thanks, Kato. Thanks. Good on you.